Hey there guys, T today we are going to look at two forms of cell death named apoptosis and necrosis. But before we go into apoptosis and necrosis, we are going to look at another form of cell death called autolysis. Before we proceed, let's look at the definition of cell death. So cell death is defined as the normal degeneration and death of living cells. First, autolysis. Auto means self, while lysis means splitting. Put them together and you get self-digestion. So this is when uh, a cell is destroyed by the action of its own enzymes. The, so these enzymes are actually released uh, as a result of the cessation of the active processes that would otherwise occur in a normal health, healthy cell. Next, apoptosis. Apoptosis is also known as uh, programmed cell death. So this is uh, when the cell decides to kill itself. So let's look at the uh, mechanism. So when a cell decides to commit suicide or kill itself, proteins called caspases go into action. And the, what these caspases do is that they break down cellular components that are necessary for a cell's survival. These proteins also then stimulate the production of DNases that would uh, destroy the DNA that resides in the nucleus of a cell. So the cell starts shrinking and they send out distress signals that are answered by macrophages which are actually the, the vacuum cleaners or sweepers that reside in the body. So what these macrophages do is that they clean away the shrunken cells without leaving a trace. So these cells have no chance to cause any kind of uh, damage as necrotic cells do. So this is a clean way of dying. Now, now let's look at the uh, next one, necrosis. So necrosis is actually the, the, the more dirty way of dying. Uh, a simple analogy would be that of a smoker. So a smoker, as we all know, does not only cause death to himself, but he also, he or she also causes death to the people around him or her. So death is the stage of dying, the act of killing. Necrosis, hence, is the premature death of cells in living tissue. They, they actually die before their time. So they, 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 they die too soon, probably as a result of external factors to the tissue or cell, such as an infection or possible ingestion of toxins or, or, or trauma. So the four distinctive uh, morphological patterns of necrosis include coagulative, liquefactive, caseous, and fatty. First up, coagulation, coagulative necrosis. Coagulative necrosis is normally uh, present in hypoxic or low oxygen conditions, such as an infarction. So in coagulative necrosis, the cellular outlines or architecture remain even after the cell's death and can be observed under light microscopy. Hypoxic infarcts in the brain can result can also result in liquefactive necrosis. Next, liquefactive necrosis. Liquid, liquefactive necrosis is uh, associated with uh, cellular destruction and pus formation. So this, uh, this is uh, typical of bacterial or sometimes fungal infections because of uh, the ability of the bacteria or fungi to stimulate an immune response resulting in an inflammatory reaction. Also, ischemia, which is the restriction of blood supply in the brain, can produce uh, liquefactive rather than coagulative necrosis. Uh, liquefactive necrosis, why, why is it liquid? Is because the cells here are actually completely digested by the hydrolytic enzymes, resulting in, in a mixture of uh, pus and, and, and the fluid remains of the necrotic tissue. 
Whereas in coagulative necrosis, why is it uh, coagulative? Is because the architecture here of the dead tissue is preserved for 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 a few days. So because the injury here denatures uh, structural proteins as well as lysosomal enzymes. So this blocks the proteolysis of the damaged cell. So the lack of lysosomal enzymes allows it to maintain this coagulated uh, morphology for at least a couple of days. Next up, Cassius necrosis. So Cassius necrosis is a specific form of coagulation uh, necrosis that are caused by mycobacteria, fungi and some foreign substances. Uh, a particular type of uh, infection that this is uh, usually associated with is tuberculosis because uh, because in Cassius necrosis you can find uh, uh, granulomas. So granulomas are actually inflammation uh, found in many diseases and they are actually a collection of immune cells that surround uh, a foreign substance. It forms uh, a wall around around the foreign substance such as Mycobacterium tuberculosis because uh, these substances cannot be eliminated. So they are technically imprisoned by the immune cells. They 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 are they, they cannot move. So they they they're trapped by by the, the this collection of immune cells. So Cassius necrosis can also be considered a combination of liquefactive and coagulative necrosis. Next up, fatty necrosis. Uh, in fatty necrosis, the, the enzyme lipase uh, uh, releases fatty acids from triglycerides. We all know that triglycerides uh, are made up of uh, three fatty acids and one glycerol. So the fatty acids then combine with calcium to form these uh, soaps. And these soaps uh, appear as white chalky deposits, as you can see in the, in the two figures here. Next up, the process of healing. So after all this destruction, something has to happen. A, a resolution, if you like. So healing is the process by which the cells in the body regenerate and repair to reduce the size of a damaged or necrotic area and replace it with new living tissue. So replacement can happen in two ways, by uh, regeneration, uh, that's when a necrotic uh, cells are, are replaced by new cells that form similar tissue as it was already there. Or, or another way is by repair in which the, 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 the injured tissue is replaced by a non-functional scar tissue. So that's all uh, for today. Thank you.